everyone. Today you are going to work on creating a fall tree. You are going to do it using watercolors and uh, tearing paper. So this is one example. And day one, you will be working on the watercolor part because you cannot glue uh, paper onto wet paint. So day one is simply watercolor. Uh, if you do it, it looks like this. If it's portrait style or standing style, and it looks like this. If you are doing it sleeping style or landscape style. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so today you will need a piece of the watercolor paper that was sent to you in your, uh, in your art packet that went home at the beginning of the year. And then you're going to need a set of watercolors. And I know that Mrs. Pollock and Mrs. Yates both uh, asked you to make sure that you guys have watercolors. And then you're going to need a cup of water. Uh, you don't need to have an eraser. You need to have a towel, because whenever you paint, you need to have a towel to be able to dry your brush on. And you're gonna need to have a paintbrush. So go ahead and get those supplies ready and meet me back at the art table. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we are going to work on our painting today. So everyone should have their paper out. Now it is up to you. If you want to do your artwork with your tree sitting like this, you can. If you want your tree uh, to be taller, you can go ahead and you can put your paper like this. So remember that this is sleeping. This is when your paper is sleeping and this is when your paper is standing. Okay, so now I am going to say hello to my beautiful watercolors. And the great thing about these watercolor trays is that watercolors keep nice in their, in their trays for a really long time. They do need water to activate them. So I cannot just paint like this on my paper. I need to make sure that I have water. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my paintbrush a little bit wet and I'm just gonna drop in some water. Basically, I'm saying hello to my watercolors. And you might not end up using all of your watercolors. That's fine. I'm just gonna, I'm not even swirling it. I'm just putting a little bit of water in my watercolors to get those ready to work. Okay, just like that. All right, so now, oh, and I forgot my brown, which is like probably my most important one that I'm working with today. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to paint my ground. So I'm going to make a nice green, almost like, I think I might even start with a hill, a little bit of a hill. So I'm gonna put my green, ooh, that's a pretty blue. Okay, and I'm just gonna make my ground. Now, remember the great thing about watercolors is that it blends. So I can clean off my paintbrush from my paint. I can clean it and I swish, wipe. I can try different kinds of green. I can do different kinds of texture. Notice how I'm pressing just like this. I'm dabbing the paint on. If I want like a little bit of yellow, I can go ahead and I can start mixing that color in. That's the great thing about watercolors is that you can mix all of these really cool colors on your paper. Oh, that's cool. I like it. I like how that's coming out. It's fun. You want to make sure that you're also super gentle with your paintbrush. You do not want to stab the paintbrush into your paper. You also do not want to stab your paint because that hurts our supplies. And we wanna make sure that we keep our supplies nice and neat for a really long time. It's just super soft. It's very, very pretty. 
Oh, that's so nice. I love it. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow, I think. Because it is fall after all. So certain parts of my grass are going to be dying. Okay. So now that I've done that, I am going to create my tree. And I want to make my tree nice and tall because, you know, if you make it really short, then you're going to have all of this empty sky. And I don't want to really want that much of my empty sky. So I'm going to make my tree nice and tall. And I start off kind of like a triangle because a trunk is wider at the bottom than it is at the top. So do you see how this makes almost like a triangle? So this is the trunk of my tree. Imagine that this is almost like your body. So you have this nice, strong, beautiful body that's gonna grow nice and tall and I'm just adding a little bit of black into that, but not very much. But I'm having fun with it. Okay, now think of your, your body. You know, it's holding that beautiful tree together. The branches are like your arms. And they're going to come out from that tree. And the smaller branches are like your fingers. And that's where all of the leaves come off. So whenever I do my branches of my tree, I just start putting in some nice, thin, beautiful arms, just like that. And the great thing about trees is that you don't have to make it look super realistic because you're going to be covering this up anyway. So you notice I just did that. I just did some, some nice thin lines. I might even do like another one just coming out. Okay. All right. Now this is the fun part. I'm done with my tree. You don't want to do too much on your tree because remember you are going to be covering up your branches with the leaves. So you don't have to go crazy on your tree, adding a whole bunch of branches. Just a few is gonna do. All right, so now I'm gonna create my sky. And the sky to me, I think is the favorite part because this is where you get to have a lot of fun. If you wanna make it a stormy, stormy sky, think about what colors you would put in that stormy sky. What if it was a beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous day and you wanted to go and play outside? What would that look like? What would the sky look like if it was nighttime? What would the sky look like if it was at sunset? It is completely up to you to make your sky look however you would like. So for myself, I think I'm just going to start off, you know, putting in some blue... I got some nice, beautiful color in there. I think I might put some lighter blue as I'm going down. I think for me, I don't want to. I don't want to do all of this. I want you guys to really be creative for your sky. Sometimes when a teacher gives an example. People will do what that example is, and I don't want to give you like too much of an idea. So I've got some color in here for my sky. I'm going to keep my sky super simple, but that does not mean that you have to keep yours simple. And I'm not really going all over my background, right? I'm not filling in necessarily all of that because, again, your paper is going to come in too. So you don't have to get super, super close. You don't have to make it super detailed. Keep your watercolors nice and loose, all right? Once you are done with your painting, let it dry. You're gonna say bye-bye for one day, okay? Because you need to let this dry. You do not want to put your paper, your tearing paper, you do not want to put it on your tree when you put your first bite. Okay? So say goodbye. Have a great day. Go play outside in the tree.